In this video, I dive deep into the highly anticipated Silent Hill 2 Remake, exploring all the significant changes made since the original release. Join me as I analyze updates in graphics, gameplay mechanics, and narrative elements that have been reimagined for a new generation of gamers. Whether you're a longtime fan of the Silent Hill series or new to the franchise, this review will help you decide if you should take the plunge into the fog-filled streets of the reimagined Silent Hill. Let's uncover together the elements that contribute to the psychological horror and intense fear that Silent Hill is renowned for. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe for more content on Silent Hill 2 and other exciting games. Bloober Team has taken on a monumental challenge that many developers would find daunting. Reimagining a classic game is no easy feat, and playing Silent Hill 2 reveals just how significant that challenge can be. The aspiration to create a game that becomes a cult favorite is a dream many developers hold dear. Recently, we've witnessed a growing trend of remaking classic titles, which allows modern gamers to connect with timeless stories. The triumph of Resident Evil has demonstrated that there is ample opportunity to breathe new life into other survival horror franchises. Silent Hill, especially Silent Hill 2, is one such series that has garnered a passionate following. Many gamers remember the haunting journey of James Sunderland in that eerie lakeside town, and this is why Bloober Team undertook one of the most difficult tasks a developer can face. Remaking a legendary game is a difficult task, and unfortunately, playing Silent Hill 2 shows how much. But let's see the details. Bloober Team has a wealth of experience in developing traditional survival horror games, as seen in the medium. Although it's not my favorite title, I can see how the camera work and gameplay align with what fans of Silent Hill and similar games expect. In contrast, in this remake, they adopted a Resident Evil-style approach, featuring a camera that follows closely behind the character, and I think this was a smart move. I understand the importance of artistic choices in establishing atmosphere through camera angles, but I personally find the over-the-shoulder view to be more appealing. The atmosphere remains compelling, and exploring certain areas can still evoke strong emotions. Moreover, the controls are simply more accessible and intuitive, and the gameplay is tighter and more responsive. New fans might be shocked at how many puzzles there are in Silent Hill 2, but they are still my favorite elements. It's quite captivating to see how the puzzles have been rearranged in the remake, even if it doesn't alter the fundamental aspects of the game. For instance, the coin puzzle has found a new home in Woodside Apartments, while the clock puzzle has moved to Blue Creek Apartments. Moreover, players can look forward to new puzzles, like the jukebox puzzle in Eastern South Vale, which must be completed to reach Woodside Apartments. The puzzles we remember from the original have evolved, and now bear a closer resemblance to those found in Extra Riddle Mode. However, they aren't exact replicas, meaning that solutions from the original game won't apply here. Personally, I found solving these puzzles to be the highlight of Silent Hill 2. There's a unique satisfaction that comes from piecing them together, even if they aren't overly complex. The design is engaging enough to make the experience enjoyable. The environment is constantly evolving, and our progress in solving puzzles plays a key role in shaping it. As we advance, we may find new paths opening up, while others may shut down, and the entire layout of the rooms can change. This fluidity contributes to a rewarding sense of progress, which is often essential for players to feel inspired to keep playing. Bloober also allows players to pick the difficulty of puzzles and combat separately, enriching and tailoring the gameplay to the player's preference, so they have certainly done a remarkable job here. The only downside was the excessive running around required to gather the necessary items to complete each puzzle. It felt a bit overwhelming at times, Another aspect I truly appreciated in the original, and I'm pleased to see it retained, is the inclusion of interactive maps for the different areas. James takes the initiative to mark important locations and blocked paths himself. There's a unique satisfaction in watching the map gradually fill with highlighted spots and labels for various places. On top of that, a major benefit is the absence of guidance for the player. Unlike many modern game protagonists, James doesn't whisper solutions to himself and if Maria is with us, she refrains from offering any clues as well. This feature stands out as a clear advantage, providing a refreshing change reminiscent of the classic Silent Hill experience amidst today's blockbuster titles. 
Are you confusing me with someone else? In the remake, there's an immediate sense that something is off with the characters. They all seem to carry some trauma or guilt. In contrast, the original presented this more subtly, implying that innocent people were ensnared in a city dominated by sinister forces for no apparent reason. The remake takes a more direct approach, exposing the intricacies of both James and the characters he encounters. Many dialogues have been altered. While the core meaning remains intact, the tone shifts due to different phrasing and delivery, which I believe improves the game significantly. <laughs> Simply put, the remake is definitely too long. The original could be finished in just under 10 hours if you took your time. The remake, however, expands that duration to about 20 hours. Bloober team has indeed delivered on their promise, adding a plethora of new rooms and buildings to discover. Yet, one might argue that it borders on excessive. As you traverse the seemingly endless corridors and streets, the experience can start to feel a bit dull. A prime example is Brookhaven Hospital, which features three different floors and a basement in both the regular and other world versions. And that's perhaps a bit excessive. How long can one keep breaking walls to find a passage, stacking boxes, and looking for ways around? It's funny for a while, because of how many hours you needed to complete the original. However, it gets more and more boring. And at times, I felt like I had to take a longer break. Ultimately, this is meant to be a survival horror experience, which means the combat should present a real challenge. But again, it feels like there's much more fighting than in the original game. You can hardly traverse a corridor without facing new enemies. After spending so much time in repetitive combat, the extensive fighting can become tiresome and dull. Moreover, when tackling the game on hard difficulty, it becomes more irritating because the enemies not only have more health, but also hit significantly harder, leading to a drawn-out experience. Another problem is how rigidly the game is scripted. There are many opponents' bodies strewn about, but preemptively dispatching them serves no real purpose. If the game chooses to have them come back and attack later, they will rise up without hesitation. Also, I had high hopes for the boss fights, but they didn't deliver the innovation I was hoping for. The first fight with Pyramid Head is a perfect illustration of this. The only change is the setting. Otherwise, it follows the same formula. You need to run around and avoid the boss who is trying to hit you with a sword or grab James. Experiencing this a second time felt repetitive, and I felt a sense of disappointment, as I was really yearning for something more engaging. Undoubtedly, the most striking element of the remake is its revamped graphic design, and Bloober Team has done an impressive job with it. The changes are so pronounced that they catch everyone's attention. The fog creates a haunting atmosphere, and in those confined spaces, you can really sense the tension and fear. However, I believe the character models fall short and are one of the weaker elements of the Silent Hill 2 remake. For example, Eddie definitely has a peculiar look, giving you the impression that his head is disproportionately large. The gameplay remains relatively unchanged, lacking both significant transformations and a strict adherence to the original. It seems the developers intended to entice new players while keeping the veteran audience in mind. Unfortunately, this strategy might leave both sides feeling unsatisfied. Some may find the lack of significant changes disappointing, while others could be distracted by the numerous new features, like the altered movement mechanics and camera angles. In summary, the story and character designs are acceptable to me. However, I believe the main flaws of Silent Hill 2 lie in the excessive exploration, which can become monotonous, and the underutilized combat system. It seems Bloober Team was afraid of turning a survival horror into an action-oriented experience, resulting in a blend of elements that feels incomplete. Moreover, there's insufficient content for a 20-hour playtime. In my view, a tighter narrative, akin to the original, would have been a wiser approach. The game is best played in chunks, which is far from ideal, since a solid survival horror should maintain tension and drive players to keep going. My final verdict? Well, in my opinion, Bloober Team made an excellent job, creating a horrible, unnerving, and unpleasantly effective game. But this new, unforgettable Silent Hill 2 adventure is also trapped between innovational and old school, and I feel it could have reached greater heights. And even so, the Bloober team gave us a must-play work of art.